Welcome back to Armani and Edwards. This is the bottom line on Woodward Sports, top of hour number two, and we'll get right to it. Uh, he's a former Lions guard, third round pick of the Detroit Lions from Washington State. 30 years ago today, Wazoo. paralyzed in a game versus the LA Rams at the Silver Dome, November 17, 1991. Uh, and then Mike Utley started the foundation, the Thumbs Up Foundation, finding a cure for paralysis. MikeUtley.org <laughs> is the website. We bring him in now. What a pleasure to be joined by Mike Utley. Mike, how you doing, Thumbs buddy? Thumbs up, Mike. What's up, buddy? <laughs> doing good, gentlemen. Doing good. What a pleasure right. it is to speak with you, sir. And just um, as, a, as a kid who, who was a huge Lions fan, a huge fan of everything going on, what a pleasure it is to speak with you uh, today especially. When I say 30 years ago today, Mike, what kind of emotions come with that? You know, everyone asks these emotions. Eh, gentlemen, it was business. <laughs> you know, and it just it is what it is, as my dad says. You you got you got to step up and, and and be a man when it's time to be a man and and it's right now it's time to be a man, and so every day I just deal with the situation that's in front of me. Nothing more, nothing less. Mike, this has been your life longer, living uh, essentially in a wheelchair longer than, um, for lack of a better way to say it, in in, in um, a able-bodied man. I apologize. I don't know how else to say it. Um, uh, this has been your life longer than um, one is a professional athlete or one is, uh, you know, walking around, yeah. running around, whatever the case may be. Um, talk, can you just kind of talk about that, how this is what your life has become and, um, and just how empowering that has become to you and so many others? Oh, my God, my good man. Do you sit down when you tinkle? <laughs> Jesus, freaking, <laughs> freaking. <laughs> One leg at a time. I jump up. I still got a wife I got to deal with every single day. I got to, you know, I got to pay the bills, man. It's, um, it's real, it's realville. Yes, it sucks I got hurt and all that kind of stuff. But uh, in reality, it's, you got to deal with it every single day. I do the things I need to do to make sure I'm healthy. I stay alive. I am productive because I promised myself I will never be a burden on society. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Hey, Mike, brother Edwards here. First thing I want to say is my father, Stan Edwards, says hello. My father, Stan, former teammate of yours, he says, Good yeah, big Stan says hello. Uh, the second thing is, so you, someone else that was drafted in 1989 who I actually got cool with was Dennis Bird. Dennis Bird was also temporarily paralyzed with the New York Jets, and uh, he obviously, like I said, temporary. But he became a big motivational speaker for us, and he was a huge motivation for me when we were with the Jets uh, in that 09 and 2010 championship runs in the AFC. And I used to just ask him. I said, "Yo, what was your motivation? Like, what what got you? Like, what were you, what did you draw from in terms of being able to start walking again? In terms of to keep going? In terms of the football was no longer there for you, but you continue the quality of life and." He said he drew from the military. He drew from the military and the things that they did over there and how they fought for our freedoms and the things that they went through was nothing. Uh, what he was going through was nothing compared to what they went through. I want to ask you, what did you draw on? What was your strength? What allowed you to be able to, like you say, you know, man up and do what you have to do? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, what it comes down to worth, to be honest with you, it was the role models of called mom and dad. Dad did what he had to do with four kids and a wife to support, getting laid off three times. Mom stood up and did what she had to do, working the third shift to make sure one, uh, one parent was, was home with us four kids. And that's reality. And I want to make sure I get out there and do those little things that my parents did for me. Now with my wife, we're not blessed with children, but I have... Uh, nieces, I am uncle to a lot of buddies' kids. So these are the things I must do every single day to be a role model for them because they remember the kids are our future. Mike Utley joins us, former Lion Guard, 30 years ago today, injured at that Rams and Lions game at the Silver Dome. Thumbs up to Mike. It's been what a battle. By the way, Darren McCarty works on our station, says he still does things with you. Wants to give you his best. And uh, tell us a little bit about the, the that Lion team back then, how great 
they were and really how bad, unfortunately, it's become here in Detroit. Do you still follow the Lions? Oh, number one, yes, sir, I do follow the Lions. I'm a line through and through. Two things. The NFL has been very good to me, but the biggest thing is the Ford family, Mr. Ford originally, Mrs. Ford, now the Ford family, the daughter's taken over. They have been wonderful. I have been blessed by playing, you know, for um, the, the Ford family and, and being a Detroit Lion, that's number one. You know, when it comes down to it, you know, for me, it's uh, watching what we did in 91 with Lomas Brown, Chris Spillman, and the whole game. God, that was, that was phenomenal. I just wish they would have won one more game. And <laughs> yeah. I understand it didn't work out. And the, uh, the Redskins did win. And my friend, um, Mark Rippon, was my first quarterback at Washington State. They took it, and he won. He became the MVP. I'm proud of him. I'm glad for him. But Jesus, cromedy, gentlemen, buck up and get back on the winning ways because, God dang it, I want the playoffs. And one day, while I'm still alive, I want you to go to the Super Bowl because, one, I want to go, I want to ring, and – that's the future for the Lions if they do what they got to do now. We had Chris Spielman, your former teammate, on a couple of weeks ago, Mike, and you brought up his name, so that kind of just jogged my memory about it. Just talk to me about how you think uh, he is kind of helping to lead this organization. It's not, look, it's year one of a rebuild right now, but uh, it seems like the right man is at the top of this organization. That's true. You could not get a better one, better person than Chris Bowman. Number two, you can't get a better linebacker, but a role model. That's a ticket. Chris has been there. And that little fella has led by example by getting there, being there early, doing what he needed to do as a professional athlete to be a leader of that defense, but a, most of all, leader of that team. And that was what was so impressive by it. But I'm going to give you a quick story about Chris Spillman. It was my first trip back after my injury, and Chris was the only guy in the locker room. And I wheeled up to him. I said, hey, Chris, man, can I ask for a big favor? He goes, sure, what? I said, dude, I got a wedgie. I got shorts on. I got a wedgie. Can you <laughs> the, uh, the pant legs there and, and kind of pull them out. And he goes, absolutely. I raised up. He pulls them out. I sat back down. He walked about four or five feet away. He turned around, he goes, Mike, your friends don't care. And he walked away. Yep. That's what kind of man Chris Billman is. He's an example of what um, a friendship is, but what a role model is, and what a great athlete he is. And I tell you what, the Ford family is great to have him uh, in that position at this point in time in, in his um, young leadership role. Hey, Mike, take us back uh, 30 years ago, and I know Ryan touched on it earlier. It was against the Rams, injury happened down inside the 10-yard line there. What, what happened uh, exactly there? We know you went up for a block, the guy came down, and he came down on your head. What, 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 went, through your, what went through your mind and your body? You know, at that, at that particular moment, when I – it was – Eric Kramer came up and called the play. I heard, you know – the guy went to, you know, Rocker went to uh, block the pass and went to take his legs out. I have done this a million times. It just, I just got caught. He caught my shoulder pads and, and pulled me down and I hit the top of my head and, and broke C567. But what the difference was this time is I, I lost strength. And I've never lost strength as an athlete before. Even when I broke my leg, I tried to get up and walk three times. I broke my rib, separated my shoulder, and separated my hip my second year. I came back from those things. But this time, when I rolled on my back, I knew I was in serious trouble because I had burning down my legs, but I just couldn't move. And then they, you know, they, Ken Fowles came out and they lowered me up in the uh, stretcher and they were wheeling me off. But two things I remember specifically about that. The fellows coming up and said, hey, Mike, we're going to get this one for you. Hang in there, brother. Hang in there. But then the crowd. I remember the fans of Detroit made an impression on me that I will never forget. And that's when I wanted the only thing I could do is raise my right hand. 
to let them know I heard them and I would be back. And God, thankfully, I'm able to still be alive and, and be able to at least pay back to Detroit what they have given me so much on that one particular day. You know, Mike, as you as you talk about being wheeled off there and the, the simple gesture of the thumbs up, it's almost a silly question to say, could you have ever imagined that simple gesture of a thumbs up yeah. uh, taking on a life of its own? You know, and now we see, even today, uh, players who are injured, who may even be on a, a stretcher as a precaution, uh, they are giving the thumbs up as they're wheeled off the field to kind of signify to everybody that, hey, it's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, the foundation that was created, uh, finding a cure for paralysis, the money you've generated, uh, in that phrase, thumbs up means so much to so many people. Could you have ever imagined uh, that simple gesture taking on a life of its own. I have never had an idea that would be that far what it is today. But gentlemen, thank God I didn't give the bird when I was wheeled off that field. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have doubted it though, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> that, it, it would have been a dollar in my pocket. But the biggest thing is I wanted, I wanted people to hear you know, that I heard them. I wanted to make sure that they made a difference. Even today, those folks, they have no idea what they, what that meant to me, that the crowd, you know, and for them to, um, to do that, I just, I wanted to give back and God willing, I'm able to even today do something for the people, the fans of, of Detroit, the fans and the folks that live in Detroit. I wanted to make sure um, that I pay back because they have given me so much. As much as that silly as that sounds, they have given me so much. Hey, Mike, uh, this isn't a question. This is just a statement. I know you're not the type. I'm just listening to you. I know you're not the type that, you know, has that attitude because you want people to, you know, feel bad for you or whatever, whatever. Like, the way in which you are, the way in which you go about life, the way in which you talk, you can just hear greatness in you. And it's great to watch. It's great to hear because I think a lot of times people take for granted just like simple things in life. You know, they, 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 I can't say the B word, but they be, they complain. You know, they talk about how hard things are and how I'm this and how I got to do this. And man, the hell with that. Like, get up, and keep moving. Keep going forward. Keep going in life. Do what you have to do. Get out there. Be active. Life is great. And I'm just listening from that from you, man. So for myself and here at Woolworth Sports Network, I'm speaking for these guys. My bad. Man, we love you and we appreciate the example that you set. Because, you know, looking and talking to you, it's, it's great, man. Amen. Amen. It's a great thing. Thanks, gentlemen. I, that means a lot, you know, from a you know player. And I just, if it was easy for us to be there, thank God everyone else would be there. And I even tell, you know, Loma's Big Daddy Brown, I just tell him, I said, at one time in my life, I was one of the best three, you know, men in the world. There was only eight, you know, 28 right guards, and I was one of them for, for three years. And it just, it's part of the, you know, part of the game, you know, when they started the game of football, it's time to uh, give back a little bit. And I just want to make sure that uh, Mr. Ford and, you know, the whole Ford family that, you um, I, I will continue to, to pay it forward for what the opportunities they have given me. Last thing, Mike, you got a Super Bowl prediction this year. Who's going to win a Super Bowl this year? Uh, I can tell you who's not going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> MikeUtley.org is the website. Thanks so much, oh, Mike. Man. We love you here. Love you, we'll always love you here in Detroit. You got a home here any Thanks. day uh, of the Appreciate year, my you, friend. Buddy. Thank you, gentlemen. You got it. The great Mike Utley, everybody. 30 years ago today, uh, that infamous game, Ooh. that moment, um, David Rocker, the L.A. Rams. And, and, you know, we focus so much on that as sports fans. Yeah. You know, it's just so refreshing to hear, you know, Mike, you know, it, it almost seems like he's, you know, normal. He's, he's regular. way past that. You yeah. know what I mean? You, there ain't, but there ain't many guys like this. No. Yeah. There's guys that would, that would quit. That, yeah. He's this guy is he's he's special without question. Damn, that was powerful. Yeah, so much. That uh, was powerful.